Hi viewers, in this video we are going to discuss about the quadriceps femoris muscle and also we will see the other muscle in the front of thigh, the sartorius, right? And these muscles are supplied by the femoral nerve, which is here, the femoral nerve. The quadriceps femoris muscle has got four parts. We will identify the four parts, then we will go into the detail of each part, origin, insertion, etc. Right, the parts of the quadriceps, you have this muscle, is the rectus femoris muscle, rectus femoris, which is superficially placed. And on either side of the rectus femoris, you can see the vastus lateralis on the lateral aspect, the vastus medialis on the medial aspect. And behind the rectus, you can see another muscle which blends with the vastus lateralis and vastus medialis and it is known as the vastus intermedii. And these three vastae take origin from the femur whereas the rectus is taking origin from the ilium. So this muscle will have action on the hip joint also apart from the action in the knee, whereas the three vasti is inserted along with the rectus into this tendon. This tendon is the uh, quadriceps femoris tendon into the patella. Insertion of the quadriceps tendon is into the patella. The patella is inferiorly attached to the tibial tuberosity through a thick ligament, the patellar ligament. Right? So, the tendon, this tendon, the patella and the patellar ligament actually uh, form the anterior part of the capsule of the knee joint. Please remember that. And anteromedially and anterolaterally, you have extensions of the vastus medialis and vastus lateralis forming the anterolateral and anteromedial part of the capsule of the knee joint, okay? So, the anterior half of the knee joint, there is no true capsule as such. It is replaced by the patella retinacula on either side and the patella and patella ligament and quadriceps tendons, right? Right. Now, let's go into the detail of the each part. The rectus femoris is here, okay? The rectus femoris takes origin by means of two heads. You have a straight head and a reflected head and it has not been exposed but in the bone I will show you what is the point of origin of the straight head. Straight head takes origin from the anterior inferior iliac spine from here whereas the reflected head takes origin from a groove just above the acetabulum, right? And these two heads converge and then form a fleshy belly, which is bipinnate in nature, right? And this fleshy belly, superiorly, it is found in the groove between the sartorius and the tensor fascia lata. And inferiorly, if you trace it, it is found between the vastus medialis and vastus lateralis and then ends in the tendon which is inserted into the upper border of the patella or the base of the patella. The patella is a triangular apex is over here, right? And so that's the origin and insertion into the patella. Patella is fixed to the tibial tuberosity through the patella ligament. Now, the uh, of course, all the parts will be supplied by the femoral nerve only, which is the nerve of the anterior compartment. And the nerve that supplies the rectus femoris will he give an articular to, to the hip joint, right? And so the muscle, since it is crossing the joint, hip joint, it flexes the hip and extends the knee, okay? This flexion of the hip and extension of the knee is the action performed for kicking a ball. So this muscle is often called kicking muscle, right? Now, let's see the 
are the parts and you have here is the vastus lateralis muscle right this lateralis is taking origin is a linear origin and i'll show you in the bone the origin of the vastus lateralis you know this roughened line it is it's a left femur okay and here's a head this is the neck this is a greater trochanter this is the lesser trochanter in front you have the intertrochantric line and behind you have the intertrochantric crest with quadrate tubercle right right now the vastus lateralis takes origin from the upper half of the intertrochantric line and then it is attached to the root of the greater trochanter or the base of the greater trochanter right and then it is in it is attached to the lateral lip of the gluteal tuberosity lateral lip of the gluteal tuberosity if you trace it out lateral lip of the linea aspera and lateral intramuscular septum which is attached to the supracondylar lateral supracondylar line okay so that is a long linear origin of the vastus lateralis is it clear now i repeat the upper, upper part of the intertrochantric line base or the root of the greater trochanter then you have the lateral lip of the gluteal tuberosity lateral lip of the linea aspera and the upper part of the lateral supracondylar line it also takes because here is a septum lateral intramuscular septum it also takes origin from the lateral intramuscular septum it is not taking origin from the lateral surface or from the anterior surface it just covers the lateral surface of the shaft of the femur and look at the fibers direction it is downwards and forwards and getting attached or inserted into the tendon of the rectus femoris muscle superiorly and inferiorly if you come it gets attached to the lateral aspect of the base of the a patella and also to the upper part of the lateral border of the patella so that is the insertion of the vastus lateralis it gives an expansion over here that forms the lateral patellar retinaculum which is attached to the lateral condyle of the tibia okay so that's the origin insertion and of course the nerve supply you can see it and this is the nerve that supplies the vastus lateralis which is coming from the femoral nerve okay femoral nerve now coming to the vastus medialis here is the vastus medialis that also has got a linear origin which takes origin from the lower half look at the same one upper half of the intertrochantric line for vastus lateralis the lower half of the, the this one and then it if you trace this it is there's a line here this line is the spiral line this is known as the spiral line and it is taking origin from the spiral line and also from the medial lip of the linea aspera medial lip of the linea aspera and inferiorly of course it will be taking origin from a tendon which is attached to this tubercle the adductor tubercle which is the adductor magnus tendon i will show you in the specimen and from that tendon also it will be taking origin as well as from the medial intramuscular septum medial intramuscular septum okay so i repeat the origin the lower part of the intertrochantric line spiral line the medial lip of the linea aspera and upper part of the of course the medial supracondylar line the tendon of the adductor magnus and from the medial intramuscular septum okay so these fibers are also here obliquely placed oblique and you can see it is running downwards and forwards laterally getting inserted into this tendon okay the tendon of the rectus femoris and inferiorly if you see it gets attached to the medial part of the base of the patella 
as well as to the medial border, the entire medial border. Whereas lateralis is to the upper part of the lateral border and you can see the fleshy fibers even reaching at a still lower level compared to the uh, lateralis muscle, uh, vastus lateralis. So this prevents the uh, natural displacement of the uh, patella to the lateral aspect and also it gives an expansion okay, which is the medial patellar retinaculum that replaces the anteromedial aspect of the capsule of the knee joint and it's attached to the medial condyle of the uh, tibia right okay here I, I just wanted to show you the tendon here can you see a tendon can you see a tendon a long tendon that is the tendon of the adductor magnus muscle getting inserted into the adductor tubercle the muscle taking origin from this tendon also as well as from the medial intramuscular septum which has been removed okay here is the medial intramuscular septum right nerve supply will be by the femoral nerve and you can see that nerve over here this is the nerve to vastus medialis and this nerve actually enters the adductor canal and then leaves the adductor canal in the upper part and supplies the vastus medialis. The other, the last part is the vastus intermedius, okay, which merges with this thing and it takes origin from the front of the fem shaft of the femur and getting inserted into the deeper, deeper to this tendon, deeper part of the base of the uh, patella or the superior border of the patella. And uh, some of the deeper fibers of the palm intermediates may be detached, okay, and constituting a muscle known as the articularis genu, which is attached to a bursa deep to the tendon, that is suprapatellar bursa to the synovial membrane. So it prevents that synovial membrane being get, getting caught between the condyles while movement. And I want another point to remember, all these motor branches to the vasti giving off an articular twitch to the knee joint, okay? Whereas the muscular branch to the rectus give an articular twitch to the hip joint, right? So that forms the main bulk of the uh, anterior compartment. The other one, the muscle which is left out is the sartorius muscle. This sartorius takes origin, can you see a long strap-like muscle? It takes origin from the anterior superior iliac spine. Here is the anterior superior iliac spine. Of course, it also gives attachment to this ligament, inguinal ligament, which we have seen it as the aponeurosis of the external oblique okay which is thickened lower border of the aponeurosis which is rolled upon itself internally extending from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle so it takes origin from here and the adjoining part below it okay so the muscle forms a lateral boundary of the femoral triangle we have seen it and then it forms a roof of the adductor canal and runs behind the knee and then it runs below the knee, it runs forwards and get inserted into the upper, upper surface, upper part of the medial surface of the tibia in front of the gracilis muscle, okay? And behind that will be the semitendinosus. All these three muscles, sartorius, gracilis and semitendinosus are inserted into the medial surface, upper part of the medial surface of the tibia. And you may find a bursa deep to this aponeurotic insertion, which is which separates the tendon from the gracilis tendon, and it may be found between the other tendons also. So it's roughly irregular and a complex bursa, and it is known as the anserine bursa, which I have uh, shown in another dissection under gyro muscles. Right. So this is so naturally since the muscle taking origin from here and getting inserted it will cause flexion of the knee, flexion of the knee, and here also it will cause, it is in front of the hip joint, so it will flex, flex the hip. So flexion at the hip and flexion at the knee, and so this 
action is this position uh, is taken by the tailor while doing performing the tailoring function so often this muscle is called tailor's muscle so that is a sartorius which is supplied by the femoral nerve you can see the muscular branch supplying it okay there may be more than one and here lower down you can see another nerve supplying all are derived from the anterior division of the femoral nerve so with this we come to the end of the discussion on the muscles of the anterior compartment of the thigh or the extensor compartment thank you very much for listening and watching